Hello! Hello, I'm so glad you're here! I can't believe you're here. Actually, this sets, it's, it kind of stumbles me, babble, baffles me, stumble baffles me, that you would be here listening to me. I am so grateful that you're here. Thank you. Um, we are about to start Tablet 3. Welcome to Tablet 3 of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, I think I will recap for you what happened in Tablets 1 and 2 for your memories, and then I will read you a summary of what will happen in Chapter 3. That is what this video is going to be. Oh, I will also recount major themes in this video. I will summarize the two big themes from Chapters 1 and 2, Tablets 1 and 2. All right, here we go. So, in Tablet 1, we learn that Gilgamesh is the godly king of the city of Uruk, uh, and he has this fatal flaw of wanting to rape all of the women in his city. Terrible flaw. So, the people of the city, uh, they pray to the gods because they don't want their king to be raping all of their virgins, and the gods create Ankudu. Ankudu is a wild man of the hills, and the gods create Ankudu, the wild man of the hills, and then the, the rumor that there's this crazy, wild, powerful wild man of the hills appears, and the people send Shamhat, who is the high priestess prostitute of the city of Uruk, and she goes and she seduces Ankudu and convinces him to come back to Uruk to confront Gilgamesh. That's Tablet 1. Tablet 2, Ankudu confronts Gilgamesh, they have a great big fight, and uh, then they become the best of friends, and they decide to set out to kill the evil ogre Humbaba. That was the summary. So, right, the themes, the big themes from Tablet 1 were, was an introduction to a very ancient gender dynamic that we still have fossilized version of today, right, it definitely informs modern male and modern female behavior, this sort of like archetypal version given in Tablet 1. Um, but there's also some really distinct differences between gender roles in, in ancient Uruk and gender roles today. Uh, notably, they have this character of the divine prostitute, uh, which, you know, I suppose we have it in, in our characters of the virgin whore, you know, like the, the, the girl who looks really slutty but no one should touch her, like that kind of thing. Um, but that's not really the same kind of thing <laughs> as the Divine Prostitute, not really at all. In some ways, quite the opposite, like inverted dichotomies. Um, yeah, so the Divine Prostitute, she was a prostitute, but she was also like the Pope of, of Ishtar, you know, this high, very high woman uh, who commanded the powers of fer fertility and the powers of domesticity. And so Shamhat, she seduces Ankudu and she civilizes him, and this is the fall of man. Um, so really interesting uh, ways to think about what femininity is. Uh, the masculinity is also quite stereotyped. You know, it's I'm Gilgamesh going to slay Humbaba. But um, pay attention to gender roles throughout. They're they're really fascinating, and I think there are some hidden qualities of both male and female that we have abandoned as as sort of archetypal essences in our society that this work can show us how to bring back, even as it shows profound violence towards women. Profound, profound violence towards women. <laughs> um, so that, that, was, that was the theme of chapter one, tablet one. The theme of tablet two was immortality and artifice. Uh, so Gilgamesh is going to slay Humbaba and Humbaba is the guardian of the forest, the cedar forest, and he says he's going to go slay Humbaba, he's going to bring back these great cedars. Have you ever seen an old growth cedar? It can be like, you know, 10 feet across, <laughs> easily. Uh, yeah, so, so he's going to cut down these, these magnificent old growth cedars that are being protected by Humbaba, and uh, he's going to bring them back to the city, and then they're going to have two New Year's festivals in one year. Think about that. Two New Year's festivals in one. Real big deal. Because these are agrarian societies and they're totally governed by the sun and the moon and the seasons and all of these rhythmic cycles. Cycles, you know, death and rebirth and death and rebirth. And here's Gilgamesh and he comes in and he says, I'm going to cut down the cedars. I'm going to turn them into wealth. And in doing so, I'm going to take control over time. I'm going to have two New Year's festivals in a row. And then I'm going to seek immortality. 
So this is, this is the beginning of the Western obsession with historical time. It's right here. Uh, as opposed to the Eastern, this is a, a false dichotomy, but the Western obsession with historical time as opposed to the Eastern obsession with cyclical time, you know, the endless wheels of samsara over and over and over. So this is about historical time. Progress. Are we going to make progress? There's another theme for you. Does progress exist? I don't know. I, this, this question bothers me so deeply. I'm not even going to talk about it, but does progress exist? That's a question. So, themes. To summarize again, we've got femininity, we've got immortality, we've got the nation of artifice, we've got, uh, what was that other one I said? I am losing my mind. Anyway, this has already been a five minute long video. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in tablet three, and then we're going to go into tablet three in the next video. Okay? All right, so, tablet three, preparations for the expedition to the forest of the cedar. The elders give Gilgamesh and Ankudu advice for their journey. The two heroes visit goddess Ninsun, who enlists the help of the sun god Shamhash, and the aid of his wife Aya. Ninsun adopts the orphan Ankudu. Gilgamesh gives instructions for the governing of a rook in his absence, and then the heroes depart. Wahoo! I will see you on a website somewhere over there. You should click, you should click the next one. Go find it.